Welcome to the Barn Online. Boxing Day, the 26th of December and the last Sunday of 2021. As another Christmas has passed its climax and all the trimmings are well on their way to the food waste and the, the decorations heading to the loft for another year, we've been well and truly reminded and renewed by the good news that indeed a saviour was born. Emmanuel, God is with us in real, relentlessly present and reliable form. During Advent and Christmas, we focus a lot on the characters who heard this news first and their response to it. We follow them to Bethlehem, full of wonder and joy as they press on and in to get a glimpse of baby Jesus. There's something just indescribably wonderful about seeing and holding a newborn baby, isn't there? I'm sure we'd all love to have been in that number to have seen Jesus as he appeared in the flesh. Yet what they got when they arrived wasn't all that Jesus had to offer. They didn't get a sermon. They didn't get words of encouragement or guidance. What they would have got is the same as any baby can give. A coo, a gurgle, a cry, some painful wind and maybe a smelly nappy. And I'm sure that didn't matter to those who traveled afar to see Jesus though, as see him they did. But how much better is it to hear him, to know him, and to know his presence with us now? Among many of his life-giving words, there's a well-known passage that is music to our ears when we're feeling up against it and worn out. And they're found in Matthew chapter 11, where Jesus says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and I will help you find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. To be able to step out of all the chaos, all the uncertainty and the upheaval of life in the early 2020s, it is only in such a rest that we will find the opportunity to reflect, to see and to be thankful for all that is good, even in the mess of life. It's something of a barn tradition, actually, that we spend the last Sunday of the year reflecting on the year past and giving thanks to God, as well as looking ahead and asking what, for what we may hope to be giving thanks for in an upcoming year. We've involved members of the church family in different ways over the years, and despite different format, this year it's no different. So let's rest and be thankful.
Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And then 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, reading from verse 12 to 24. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard, in love, because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Amen.
Social conditioning makes us think of being thankful in terms of displaying good manners, remembering to say our please and thank you, sending thank you cards and gifts. We think of it in a very other-focused way, seeing it as about making another person feel valued and appreciated. And of course, that's quite right. But thankfulness is much more beneficial to the person who's giving thanks. In that respect, it's a lot like forgiveness. We might think that someone who really hurt us doesn't deserve our forgiveness, and so we won't forgive them, whether they ask us or not. But forgiveness actually has far less to do with the other than the one who forgives. Forgiveness releases us from a persistent wound that keeps on inflicting as long as we hold on to it. Letting go is not letting another off, but it's choosing to let go of the thing that is hurting us. Thankfulness, although very different, is something of the same in that whilst expressing it, we may bless another person, but it's not just a statement, but it's a state of being. It's possible to give thanks without being thankful. We ought to want to give thanks, but with a grateful heart. Withholding thanks or being sparing with thanks might cause a bit of offense to others, but over time, it will rob us of our joy and our peace. And did you notice that peace is closely related to thankfulness in Paul's letter to the Colossians and also the Thessalonians? Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. And in 1 Thessalonians, it says, Live in peace with each other, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. There isn't much room in our lives for thankfulness until we know God's peace that passes understanding and find the rest that he promised for our soul. And as Paul suggests, worship is a great way of entering such a space. Stuart Townend and Keith Getty wrote the hymn, My Heart is Filled with Thankfulness. It's three verses focused on the reasons we're able to give thanks to God for what he's done, is doing, and has promised to do. The first verse expresses gratitude for what God has done. My heart is filled with thankfulness to him who bore my pain, who plumbed the depth of my disgrace and gave me life again, who crushed my curse of sinfulness and clothed me with his light and wrote his law of righteousness with power upon my heart. It's not so much a a once-in-a-lifetime thanksgiving, but the ongoing thankful life, lived in response to who we are because of what Jesus has done for us long ago. We're thankful that we've not been lost, but we've been found and made new. And in the midst of difficult times, it may be more difficult to see clearly what we have to be thankful for. But if we can call to mind what we can be thankful for, then we have a lot to be thankful for, even in the uncertainty of 2021. When asked what we we were thankful for that COVID hasn't taken away from us, some Barn family responses included this, humour, care for each other, and the fact that the pandemic may have rebirthed the culture of thinking and caring for others more. The ability to connect with each other, which has changed in how we do it, but it's still possible, maybe even more possible, through new technology and even old technology such as the telephone. We can keep in touch with our family, our friends and church. We're thankful for God and his never failing presence because nothing, not even a global pandemic, can separate us from the love of God. It's been reassuring to know that he is the one secure thing that we can hold on to in this time. So thank you, God, for what has not been lost because of COVID. Now, the second verse of the hymn focuses on thankfulness to God for what he is doing in the present. 
my heart is filled with thankfulness to him who walks beside, who floods my weaknesses with strength and causes fears to fly, whose every promise is enough for every step I take, sustaining me with arms of love and crowning me with grace. You know, Emmanuel is a Christmas word, but it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be a word that we only hear at Christmas. It should be the word on our lips every single day from the moment we get out of bed until our head hits the pillow at night because it's true. God is with us. And he's dealing a blow to weakness and fear with strength and his reliable promise to sustain us with his love and grace, his undeserved kindness. Knowing that God is with us, even in the thick of it, can give rise to thankfulness in a different way. It's hard to imagine being thankful for anything because of COVID, when it's known for bringing sickness, death, fear, disruption, hardship, and a lot of stress. Yet nothing is wasted with God. He weaves everything into the beautiful tapestry of the new heaven and new earth, which seems so far away, yet are constantly under construction. Here is some of what the Barn family have to be thankful for that COVID, whether directly or indirectly, has actually brought. A greater appreciation of nature and people walking more in it. Home, whilst maybe seen as an isolation chamber for some, has become a real sanctuary to others. Realising the good things around us and taking this time to consider other ways of doing things and to take delight in the simpler things and have time to ourselves to reflect and to rest. That people can connect better using IT than before, so long distance video chats are now common. Online talks like this one are becoming commonplace, reaching people all over the world, which feels a bit smaller and more connected. For life-changing decisions for people and changing careers, starting new jobs, projects getting done in the home and in the garden. Thankful that communities have supported and rallied together. Thankful for God's unfailing love that can overcome all fears. And thankful for Zoom, which has kept us connected throughout the pandemic. So thank you, God, that although COVID intends harm, you have brought some good through it. Now the final verse of Town End and Getty's Thankfulness Hymn looks ahead to where this journey of relationship with God leads, our new eternal future. My heart is filled with thankfulness to him who reigns above, whose wisdom is my perfect peace, whose every thought is love. For every day I have on earth is given by the King. So I will give my life, my all, to love and follow him. If we're prone to fear in uncertain times or in a certain present, then we're sure to find our future hope shaken or vanished altogether. Yet a vital part of God sustaining us in the present is our trust in the future that he has promised and in his power and timing to deliver that so that we can keep going and look forward with expectancy and longing and great hope. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. So that we don't lose hope but cultivate thankfulness. It's not enough that the message of Christ is alive in my heart and in your heart, it needs to be dwelling among us, collectively. Thankfulness isn't something we can easily achieve alone. It requires the other parts of the one body that we're called to, to help cultivate it in each other. And Paul unpacks this shared task for the Thessalonians when he says, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, and be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. 
Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So it's right to look back with thankfulness and to look forward with the same hope-filled thankfulness as well. It's a shared task and that's why it's good to include voices from across the family expressing their thanks and their hopes. So let's finish by bringing some of those thanks and hopes to God in prayer. Loving Father God, we give you all thanks, praise and glory. As we've reflected on what makes us thankful, we say it again now, thank you, Lord, for all that you give, for all that you've done, for all that you are, and that all that we are because of your great love for us. As we look ahead to 2022, we thank you for your continuing love, presence and guidance. We need it so much. And we ask that you bring us gentle reminders when we need them in order to cultivate thankfulness as a regular part of our lives. In the year ahead, we pray that the many divisions that separate groups in our society will be healed and that people look forward rather than looking back. That we pray that we will be more willing to see and understand another's point of view, even if we don't share it. That politicians can inspire us once again and earn our trust and respect. After a second year marked by the experience of a pandemic, we pray that Omicron or other potential new variants of COVID will not cause the level of problems that are feared. So would you give wisdom and clarity to clear away confusion and mistrust so that everyone might feel able to get the vaccine. We pray too for justice and mercy to flow and that those in poorer countries will be able to get vaccinated too so that the virus would lose its power. Lord, we want to see COVID eradicated or at least treatment developed to allow us more freedom and that the many people terrified to go out just now will have the confidence to start mixing again and isolation become more eased. Help us to see, particularly when young people are struggling and help to get them talking about their fears and anxieties. We pray for opportunities to share wisdom and learning and support in intergenerational intergenerational community. We long, Father, for a time when we'll be able to meet and hug without fear. We'd love to see a return to activities around the barn, especially for those who are scared to get out and about at the moment. And to that end, we pray for a significant door to be opened in the funding of our building project plans so that it can be realised to resource the work that you have planned for the future at the barn. Jesus, it would be wonderful to see a real turning to you across our community and for your church to be able to nurture and encourage those who discover you as Lord and Saviour. And so finally we pray that in 2022 you will work with us and shape us to be better people towards each other and nature after Covid and that our lives will have changed for the better and not just revert to how we used to be. Bring healing for our people in mind, body and spirit and a sense of renewal for those who already believe. Would you grow in us greater trust in you than ever before? And all this we ask with thankful hearts in the precious name of Jesus, our Saviour and friend. Amen.
And now may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and yours, giving you peace, enabling rest, and cultivating a thankful heart in you during the last few days of the year and on into 2022 and beyond. Amen.